Hey everyone, it's Jeff Anderson from Modern Combat and Survival Magazine, and all you have to do is watch the news to realize that we are living in very dangerous times. Whether it's terrorists or active shooters or criminals that are walking the streets, more and more people are realizing that the only way they can truly protect you and those you love from the predatory criminals that are out there is you. And sometimes, in order to fight violence, you need to use violence as a weapon against these people. Now that's the topic of a book that a good friend of mine just put out. It's called When Violence is the Answer. This is by Tim Larkin. He's the founder of the Target Focus Training System. I've been training with Tim for about 20 years now and following his stuff. He's been a member of our network forever. And he just released the book and I just got done doing a video cast with him for our podcast where we dig deep into When Violence is the Answer and go over some of the key principles that are in the book that you can use to be better prepared against the criminals that are out there. Now there's a special bonus built into the video that you're about to watch. I'll give it to you right now. All you need to do is go ahead and get a copy of Tim's book. Go over to whenviolenceistheanswer.com, grab a copy of his book, and then send me your receipt. Go ahead and email it to me at tftbonus at gmail.com. And what I'll do is I will send you back for free, no strings attached, a copy of an early recording that uh, Tim and I did called The Triad of Violence, where we dig even deeper into the concept of using violence as a weapon against the predatory criminals that are out there. So enjoy the video, go ahead and pick up a copy of his book, send me the receipt, and I'll send you back the bonus. Uh, Tim, uh, with your book, and I'll go ahead and give a, a quick flash here for those people who are watching on video, you know, when, when violence is the answer, um, what would you say from your research and, and dealing with this topic of violence for so long, what is the biggest misconception that people have out there when it comes to the word violence that, that limits their ability to use it as a tool for self-protection? Uh, we equate uh it, it's that's the, the key question you know and I, I as you know you know we we talked before my publisher was fighting me on using the term violence you know using that word i had to fight to get that word in uh to the book for this very reason because people equate violence with criminal and so they they don't think there's they think if you if you use the term violence there's no useful knowledge there for a sane social citizen uh to get and and really what what I try to point out is the idea that violence actually is what we need to look at. Violence is actually what is the reason um, it's a tool that allows us to have self-protection, self-defense and all those things. Those are, those are definitions of violence after the fact, meaning if you've used it in a justified way, then it's called self-protection, self-defense. If it's used in a criminal way, then it's, you know, you're dealing with the, the, um, the criminal aspects of it and you're getting prosecuted. And uh, so, but violence itself is, is the tool that we use and we, and we need to study it. We need to, especially this, you know, your, your people, you know, um, it, it's such a stigmatized subject that, you know, unfortunately the people that have the best information right now are the predators. And, you know, if you study the tool of violence, you can readily see that it's available to everybody. You just have to understand how it works. Yeah. Well, Tim, in, in your book, uh, When Violence is the Answer, I mean, you, you say that there's a, a major difference between social aggression and asocial violence. What is that major difference that people really need to get? And how does it impact development of kind of the mindset that's needed in order to train realistically for a violent attack? The 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 issue the issue comes down to this you know i joke with my with my instructors and my friends all the time that people want to respond with violence when they should respond with communication and they want to respond and then when they need to respond with violence they want to communicate you know uh it, it, it's really interesting so it really comes down to that aspect of communication meaning if communication is still available to you in whatever encounter you're talking about then you're talking about antisocial aggression it, where where you still have the ability to to talk your way out of the situation or disengage or possibly de-escalate the situation because there's communication going on. Um, where, where we have to understand, you know, that the title is when violence is the answer and when violence is the answer is when it's devoid of communication. When you're dealing in an asocial environment where violence is imminent, 
And training to understand the difference between the two is kind of the key. And really, it comes down to choice, meaning it's, it's just that simple, Jeff. If you ask yourself in the scenario that you're imagining, do you have choice? And if you still have choice, then it's not time to use violence. It's when you're completely devoid of choice, meaning there's no exit. You're facing imminent grievous bodily harm. If you don't take action, you're basically participating in your own murder at that point. That is what the book is written for, and that's the specific parameters uh, that, that we use. The event is so serious that if you did have the luxury of having your firearm with you, you would feel justified in emptying the firearm into that threat. And, and so that's the threshold that we put on, on when you'd use violence. What happens is people get caught up in the ego game, and they get caught up in thinking they need to respond and uh, to to socially aggressive situations, things like road rage, things like, uh, you know, comments made to you that you could easily just walk away from or, or, you know, your ego will take a hit, but it doesn't pass the threshold of responding with violence or, you know, calling a bluff, you know, basically, basically, you know, posturing yourself and, uh, you, you know, trying to engage, uh, com you know, communication and, you know, antisocial communication having no idea where it's going to end up, you know, that's where it gets a lot of people in trouble. When, when I look at this and people, you know, say, well, I had no intention of it going here. And it's because they continue to, uh, you know, take part in a situation that they could have de-escalated or, or, or got out of at a much earlier place. Um, and that's really the education portion of the book. You know, I really want people to understand that delineation of, you know, it's really important that, that they understand there's a lot of things that they're participating in right now that they really don't need to. So I'm looking for a behavior change, you know, in people. But then I'm also looking for people to understand they need to recognize when violence is the answer. And it needs to be clearly defined for them. And that's what I attempt to do in the book. Yeah, it, you know, so, it's so funny. This is dovetailing with, uh, this has been a common topic of our podcast lately. And, and just my own mindset. It's only been the last couple of months that I've really, really started to get with quotes around it and capital G E T um, just how much that mental trigger of turning on and turning off of, of no, very simply like knowing when you're in a, in a fight and how critical that is to being able to win that fight. And, and um, so, I mean, it's just, it's, I mean, you, you've always preached that in, in your training and I've, and I've taken training for everybody that's out there. I mean, I'd started training with him back in 1997. And this was all part of it. That mindset is so critical of, of that people really need to understand when you're in a fight so that you're not the one who's playing, you know, defense. You're not the one who is reacting to the violence in front of you. But when the sooner you can recognize that, the just that's, that's a critical life saving skill, just that recognition. It all comes down to mindset. So, you know, Tim, in, in, um, let's yeah. talk about more about the mindset of, of the, the criminal. And in, in When Violence is the Answer in your book, um, you, know, you say that the worst people have the best information. So what do you mean by that? The worst people have the best information. And, and what are the biggest takeaways from, from that concept that, people, that, that allows them to be able to um, take advantage of that knowledge for themselves and be able to protect themselves better? Yeah, and what I mean by that, and, and you have to be careful because people could take it the wrong way. They could think like I'm somehow glorifying, you know, uh, gang member, prison gang members, or I'm glorifying criminals or something like that, or I'm, I'm thinking that we should hold, hold them up in, um, in some sort of high regard, and that's not the idea at all. What we have to understand is the reason it's worthwhile to look in those arenas is because it truly is a petri dish of asocial violence. They live in an asocial world and, and violence is the currency that derive, they all derive power from this. So it's the successful use of the tool of violence is, is where and when uh, they can um, uh, you know, derive their power. So they can't, re they can't, they can't rely on, on um, opinion. Sorry about the dog. Okay. She's also an it's all good. <laughs> um, <laughs> she never barks. And of course she's barking now. Um, but uh, they, uh, they don't rely on, um, uh, they, they don't rely on opinion. They have to rely on results. They're very results oriented when they use the tool of violence. And what's, in, what's interesting about, about looking at them is they focus very differently. They, the, the way they use their minds to, to see violence, they don't ever see themselves from the victim's perspective. 
And that's probably one of the number one things we can really you know, take away from that meeting. If you and I were to work, work, uh, watch, watch a act of violence, you know, say we watched, we saw a criminal assault or something on like closed circuit TV, most people tend to see things from the victim's perspective, meaning they try to Monday morning quarterback what you could have done from the victim's perspective. And what we learn is that's the absolute wrong way to train your brain. Um, what you have to do is you have to come back and kind of take a very clinical approach to the act. And you have to sit there and say, okay, during this act of violence, when did something happen that changed it, changed everything in the favor of the other person, whoever the other person is, criminal or, or you know, what we would consider the good guy. And that's what you need to study. So you need to say, okay, here's where, you know, here's this flurry of events. And wait a minute, right there, right there, everything systemically changed. Why? Well, there's usually a part of the body that's been attacked that got a huge result. It's what we define as an injury to the human body. Um, and usually it's the person that first, when you look at these acts of violence, it's the person that gets the injury. The first injury is usually the person that ends up being the winner in that situation. They put systemic injury on the person, usually get the person in non-functional faster. Now, the art in doing that for us with our minds in order to protect ourselves is we need to look at that and we need to sit there and get the good information out of that. Meaning, oh, look, if you hit this part of the body, you get this kind of a result. That's good information for me. That does not mean that we're condoning if it was a criminal act. We're not condoning what's going on. What we're telling our brain to do, though, is when you look at an act of violence, I need the good information. I need to know what works and why it works. That's exactly what these guys do. And it inoculates yourself from exactly what you and I were just talking about, that idea that when it's time to go, it's time to go. And you don't want to hesitate when it's time to go. You want to sit there, immediately access what opportunities are in front of you and go right after them. And that's really the, probably one of the most interesting things when I looked at the prison culture and I looked at the gang culture and I got to talk to all the top corrections guys and, and have the feedback from the interviews of these top shot callers that literally are extremely clinical. And they, uh, you know, Jeff, what's amazing is they're extremely well-educated. And they, they speak, there's this one guy that, that I, I got to hear from the Mexican mafia. And if you didn't see the little bit of the neck tattoo coming above the, the collar, you literally would have thought this is a fortune 100, you know, CEO, the way he mm -hmm. talked. And he ran an organization that was, you know, running millions, of, you know, millions, if not billions of dollars um, out, of, out of prison. He was running the streets and they're highly, highly disciplined. And the way they look at violence that he said, he goes, we study anatomy because we have to learn how to kill because we have to be successful using the violence. That's how we derive our power. That's how we run the drugs. That's how we run the streets from prison. It's the successful use of the tool. If they fail in using the tool, they could, you know, it, it's, if you put it in the entrepreneur's sense, if, you know, if all of a sudden our currency is gone, our, our cash flow is gone, our ability to get our message out, all that it severely affects our business. And we could actually go under if this continues. It's the same thing with these prison gangs. If they can't use violence and, and uh, be able to get their way, they lose all their power. And so that's why it's worthwhile looking at these people. And that's why I say, hey, the best information often comes from the worst people because they have to look at violence very differently than we do in the civilian world. We can, we can all have opinions. We can say, hey, martial art X is my favorite and I like it because of X, Y, or Z, or no, I'm going to go do this combat sport over here, or I'm going to they don't care where the information comes from. They look there and they say, does it get a result? Does that particular thing get a result? If it gets a result in, as an injury, then it's useful information. I don't care what you call it. Um, you watch a prison, um, you watch violence in, in, in say a prison yard. What's really interesting is if you ever watch one of those prison you know, uh, yard uh, things again, mm -hmm. stop yourself from looking at the violence look at everybody around what you'll see is you'll see every just about every head kind of down and they're just they're focused right in on the act of violence and why they're trying to see okay is there any good information here for me because they're saying this might be next me next time and i want to know you know basically on the job training so that approach when you put it with you know for us you know what we did is we, we took that approach we applied it to physics and physiology of the human body via sports injury data 
And so what we were able to do is we were able to sit there and say, okay, is the, you know, entry to the human body is something that is bodies colliding with bodies, bodies colliding with the planet. And the best information that we have on that, that data that we have on that is sports injury because that's exactly what sports injuries are. So there are areas of the human body that keep coming up. And what's interesting is when you overlap that, it's basically dovetails with these prison assassins that, that know exactly where to go on the human body and exactly where to get a result. It's just, but they're using it, they're getting it on the job training, a little bit informal feedback, a little informal anatomy instruction. And when you put it up against, you know, we had some of the best sports medicine people looking at this and putting it up. It, it was incredible when the way it just dovetailed together. Um, and, and so that's it. That's what I, I, I was trying to say. We have, I, I take the reader in some uncomfortable places and we have to understand we're not glorifying these people. We're just trying to extract the best information. And I want to put you on par mentally. If you're up against an alpha, I always imagine that my clients are going to be up against one of these alpha predators. And so I want you at least mentally to be on the same plane as them. I don't want to give them that tremendous advantage that they already have because most people don't look at the tool of violence the right way. Yeah. Well, Tim, the, the, the criminal mindset versus the, you know, the person that you deal with, the, the, the average Joe citizen that you're trying to protect from or allow them to protect themselves from this mindset that's out there. I mean, that's, that's a real shift, right? Like, you know, you, you, you talk about how the criminal mindset, like they don't have the same barriers we do. They're not thinking of consequences of, oh, gee, will I lose my job because of this or things like that. They already know what their job is. They're coming in with shock and awe and, and intimidation. And they know because of on the job training, whether it's in prison or whether it's on the streets or whether it's their friends tell them or whatever, like they already know when they've got you, when they have a victim, when they don't have a victim. And what I find a lot of times when you look at, at like fights caught on camera or crimes caught on camera and things like that, is I always look at like the, the wheels that are spinning in the, the victim or the good guy's mind. And I oftentimes find that you can see the same thing that the criminal sees, which is guy's toast. Like he's not even going to put up a fight. And, and to me, that's always right. like the number one thing. Now that's a combination of mindset and technique, right? Like it, part of it is having the confidence in, in your abilities and Second is having the abilities, to, and that's what builds the confidence that you know that, no, I don't, I don't care who this is, I'm going through this guy, and having that kind of violence is the tool that I'm going to have to use, and I know how to use it. So let's start with the mindset of that first. So what strategies do you have, or what um, advice do you have for people to be able to really instill that, that mindset? Like from your book, you know, when that when violence is a tool, that is the only tool you have, and I'm gonna and I'm gonna use it full force, 100%. What strategies have you found to be the most useful for helping somebody who's not a law enforcement, who's not a soldier, to start to build up that mindset of okay, I have to use violence, and here and now and now it's ready to use it, mindset only. Yeah, from from the mindset standpoint. The, the drill that I just talked about is probably one of the biggest things that will start to change your, your mindset. As a matter of fact, um, you know, during the, uh, I, during the, with, with the book, what I decided to do was because you can only convey so much in the pages. I, I have a, for everybody that buys the book, I have a, a, a 10 module, uh, you know, online video companion that, that I go through. And, and it's funny, we're talking about this because, you know, chapter three is what we're talking about right now. The, you know, my mindset matters most. And my drill for them is exactly what I'm about to tell your audience, which was I needed them to go out there and actually start looking at acts of violence, internet, TV, whatever, and start making that initial switch. The initial switch is start identifying with the winning side of violence. Again, turning like the audio off in your head, you know, or, or literally off on the, on the thing, watching the act of violence, watching who's successful, and then, you know, start telling yourself. And then the, the next thing was, then you tell yourself, it's uncomfortable for most people, like the first three, four days, and that's what everybody's written back, you know, when they give me feedback, they go, oh, it's really uncomfortable for three days. But, and they go, but, then I started to see, oh, wait a minute, yeah, okay, oh, yeah, that's where it happened, this is it. They started extracting the information, and they were able to do it in a way that they, they got over the emotional aspect of, oh my God, I'm siding with a criminal type thing. Um, and then they started saying, okay, well, this is what works. And then 
the alphas, like the alphas that we talked to in the prison system, they would look at acts of violence. They would never identify with the victim uh, from the victim. They never saw themselves on the losing side of violence. But they did one thing beyond what I just talked about. Not only did they see, see the successful side, they then, if they had any comment, the comment would be, well, yeah, he did a good job, but I would have done this, meaning they improve upon it. They say, well, it would have been better to actually go into to this area first to get a better result, or I would do this. They start to then have their brain say, well, how could I improve, improve upon this? How could I, how could I be more efficient, more effective? Um, and that's a very simple way doesn't require any physical training whatsoever. It just starts flipping the mind to look at violence correctly. The second thing that we have to start doing that, that these guys all have the same outlook on is they don't think about bigger, faster, stronger. Now that doesn't mean that bigger, faster, stronger isn't useful. I, you know, everybody has to understand that. But from a self, uh, self protection standpoint, we're gonna assume the person's always gonna be bigger, faster, and stronger. We're gonna assume they carry weapons. I assume there's more than one. So that's the assumptions in, in the training that we put in. Therefore, I can't focus on the differences between me and my attacker or attackers. I have to focus on the similarities. You know, we all have these inherently, you know, weak, unprotected areas in the human body. And you start focusing on that. So instead of saying, oh my God, this guy's taller than me, he outweighs me by 30 pounds, you say, oh, there's his throat. Yep, recognize that. Oh, that's where the bladder is. I know his bladder's right there. Oh, look, he's facing me this way and the ankle's available to me because we all have it. So you focus on similarities rather than differences. Those are two drills, mental drills that I start doing with people. So when you're standing in line, you know, and you're, um, you know, you're, you're waiting to check out at the grocery store or, or you know, you're in line at a, at a uh, um, you know, a, a department store or something. I have my clients just regularly look around them, see other human bodies, other people standing around and just start looking and saying, oh, you know, recognizing, you know, available targets on people. And then to ask themselves, hey, am I close enough? Or would I, would I be able to affect an injury here? Or what would I have to do? And should, so the brain starts working in a low stress environment to start answering questions for yourself so that when you need to use this, and this is the most interesting thing is we've had people that have had as little as, you know, the two day trainings that we do, who, you know, took away the mental training, unfortunately, you know, years later had to access the information and use the information to save their own lives. And they said it was amazing how this stuff came back. You know, it's not like anybody moves really, you know, sweet, like in the movies or anything like that. It's brutal. You know, violence is really ugly, Floppy. but yeah. they were effective. Yeah, they were effective because they, their mind knew where to go. They knew what to do in a situation like that. And those simple drills that I just talked about, I can't tell you systemically the change it's made in, in, in just a number of people. Yeah. Well, let's, um, so Tim, Tim, let's talk about, um, like one thing that builds up confidence is knowing that you have the ability to carry through and take this person out. Like, I think when, like nobody, I think would be on the playground, you know, accosted by a five-year-old who is, you know, kicks you in the shins and you don't, you don't, you don't tremble with fear when you're facing that little kid. Cause you know, you can kick the snot out of him if you needed to. Right. So, but people mentally obviously limit themselves and they think victim, they think that, and then your training helps to rewire that and start to look at targets, start to look at focusing on things. Um, and, 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 but it's the tactics that you teach that help also build up the confidence. Part of it's mental, but you have to be able to back it up. Mm -hmm. Just saying, I can, you know, I can beat this guy up and then throwing a punch that bounce off of his chest isn't going to really work. So, so let's transition to tactics. Right. Now, what strategies or concepts or framework can you share with us today that will help somebody at least understand the, the tactics side of it when it comes to using violence as a tool, how they should be thinking practically for, for surviving an attack. Uh, you know what? I know that doesn't lead into your um, right there. I probably totally screwed up how you even, I know I've already failed right now because surviving an attack isn't really what you're talking about. And I know, and I'll let you go ahead and just beat the hell out of me on that topic alone right there. But, but just that phraseology that I use is self-limiting mentally. So, so go ahead and beat me up for that. Yeah. And then give us, give me some tactical stuff, physical stuff that will help people to gain more confidence in their abilities that they can leave with that at least gets them started to be able to back up that, that combat mindset. Go ahead, slap no, my hand first. You know, <laughs> well, yeah, but, but, you know, it's actually very useful that you do that because, again, 
we feel pretty bad, you know, as a society, when we talk about it, we always, we, we do, we go out of our way to basically let everybody else know, Hey, I'm not that guy. I, I, I don't, I don't enjoy doing this and I just want to survive. And nobody just wants to survive. You know, if you're facing a violent act, you need to dominate that thing. You, you want to walk away. You want to be the victor. You don't want to survive. I deal with a lot of people that have survived violence. Not a good thing. Yeah. Um, you know, I mean, I'm glad they didn't get killed, but, you know, or murdered. But, but again, surviving isn't enough when it comes to violence because it can just, it can systemically change your life. It's just, uh, it's amazing how just in a few seconds, you know, your life can absolutely be turned upside down. A lot of it is the, uh, the you know, by understanding and physically training, when I mean, if you go through the physical training process of learning where on the human body, doing slow, deliberate training and locking things in where you're learning injury to the human body, somebody's modeling injury for you, you're getting all that feedback loop that we're talking about. That helps a lot, you know, um, uh, on that, you know, of course, you know, I always prefer everybody to have training. Um, but that said, a lot of people that have just viewed the information and use it have been able to access it because why? We're, you know, the, the, the scary part for most people isn't learning this stuff and saying, oh my gosh, the scary part for most people is when they're introduced to this type of a approach, they find out that they're already pretty good at this, meaning this isn't hard stuff to do. And that's because we are pre-wired. We're wired for violence. We, that's how we survived. And that's not a negative thing. It's a survival uh, thing for our species. We had to be good at, at, at using the tool of violence. And, you know, what makes us dangerous also is not the fact that we were the biggest, fastest, and strongest. So we should all sit there and, and understand that as a human beings. And I would pick the biggest, fastest, and strongest of us and challenge that person to be thrown in a cage with a 65 pound mountain lion that hasn't eaten in a couple of days and is really ornery, you know, nobody's going to want to take that up. You know, uh, it's just, it's, you know, animals are so much faster and stronger and, and the reflexes are there. So we have to ask ourselves, what made us dangerous? Well, the brain, that's our real weapon. Our real weapon is training our brain correctly. And what you touched upon was absolutely true. If you tell yourself, there's nothing I can do, I'm screwed. What if that's absolutely true, you know, but if you give your brain direction, your brain will say, okay, you're telling me there's nothing we can do, so I'm just shutting down. If you say, well, look for opportunities, you know, and then you start educating yourself like we're talking now, all of a sudden the brain says, oh, that's right, okay. When something like this happens, you need me to get out there and start looking for opportunities, where to go on this guy's body, where, what's available to me, how to use it. I need to know what tools on me are really useful. And so what you were doing is we're making sure that this isn't the first time we've thought about this information, you know, we put it in our heads and we've started training our most effective weapon, which is our brain, to start thinking about how to use the tool of violence and how to, how to actually access that. And the other thing is we treat it like physical work is how we should train it. And what I mean is when you go to like learn how to stomp somebody, there's no special march, martial artsy way to do that. What you do is you look at it the same way if you had to stomp on, like when we were kids and you had to stomp on a Coke can. And you know, how would I crush the Coke can so it spreads everywhere? Well, that's the same mechanical work that we would do on the human body. So we already know how to do mechanical work. Um, we're all able to do that. We actually naturally, when you tell people, the worst thing I can do is tell somebody to do a strike or a kick with kind of a martial arts type of instruction. And say, okay, hey, I want you to do a roundhouse kick to this guy or something. I say, I'll just tell somebody, hey, if you were gonna kick a, if you're gonna kick a soccer ball right now, um, you know, how would you kick it? If you're going to toe kick this football, how would you do that? Well, I do it just like, that. and they have perfect structure every time they, they, every time I equate it to mechanical work, I don't have to say anything about how they deliver it. They have their body weight engaged. Everything's there. So that tells me we as humans already know how to do all this. And so that's the one, that's the one thing we should all take away is all I'm going to do is tap into with what I've written in the book and, and some of the methods that I talk about. These methods just tap into natural, natural skill sets that we already have, you know, and that's, that, that probably is some of the most disturbing parts for most of my clients that saw themselves as having no information whatsoever. And then because these natural training methods are shown to them, they realize, well, wait a minute, this is actually pretty damn easy. And uh, I'm almost upset that I'm able to, you know, just, I know how to drop a knee on a guy's throat. I know how to do this. I've had some women that are, that just were, they really had to wrap their heads around it. But then, you know, it also builds that inner ability that when you understand that violence is not about competing with another human being, it's about taking an opportunity that's given to you, exploiting that opportunity, 
putting an injury on the other person so you don't get to find out how big, fast, and strong the other guy is. That you, you put them into a state where they're responding to trauma and then you know how to put additional trauma on them until the person's non-functional. And I've had some of the most unlikely people in the world, clients of ours, that have faced bigger, faster, and stronger, were given an opportunity because the predator didn't see them as a threat and they were able to exploit that opportunity and it ended up saving their lives. Hmm. So, you know, it's a really simple, straightforward tool that we have. But if you think of it in terms of martial arts competition or anything like that, that that's not it. Learning how to use violence is it's not going to change the fact that if you jump in the ring with a really great MMA practitioner or jujitsu practitioner and you agree to those rules, you're, you're going to get smoked every time, you know, because you don't do that. But when everybody uses violence, it's amazing to see how you can put everybody basically on par because it's the person that first gets a real injury that walks away. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Oh, Tim, this has been, this has been great. I'm really happy that you got this book out there. I think it's, um, it, it's a great exploration of what it really takes to use violence as a tool. And I think it's such a necessary mind shift that has to happen for those people that are out there, not that are like arts focused, but those that are really trying to apply um, something to, to being able to protect themselves and be able to, when, when violence is brought to them, that they can actually use violence to be able to defeat this attacker and not be the victim there, I think is, uh, is really critical. So again, everybody, the, uh, the book is When Violence is the Answer. You can pick it up. You can go over and check it out on uh, Tim's website, although I don't, didn't see a really great spot on there for it. So um, you might want to um, go over and uh, look up Tim on Facebook. Uh, go ahead. Is there a better way? Is it on Amazon? It's on Amazon. I've seen it on Amazon. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it's on. Uh, we can do it. You know, I'll put the same thing up on, on, on my website. If they go to actually when violence is the answer dot com, okay. they order it there. Anybody that order anybody that orders it, the, you then just go back to that page, put your put your email address in, and you get enrolled in the in the ten module course. I'd really like your people if, if they're nice enough to support me with the with the purchase of the book. I'm going to give them back a really good ten module video where we go in depth on each chapter. So there's 10 chapters and I, I do 10 modules for them because uh, I, I really appreciate it because this is such a taboo subject that if, if people, if I, the more I can get the message out and get people to just look at this a little bit differently, what I'm really hoping for is behavior modification with everybody. Cause I want to minimize the chance of violence ever entering anybody's life. But in order to do that, we have to go in some really uncomfortable areas. And I can't tell you how much I appreciate you, you know, letting us delve in those uncomfortable areas today. Yeah, and I'll also throw in also, so everybody that goes ahead and buys the book, uh, go on over to Amazon or go over to um, whenviolenceistheanswer.com, right? That's the URL for it? Yes. Yep. Okay. Um, yep. If When you purchase it, go ahead and forward it over to us. I think the, uh, I'll have a, a link on our, on our page, but I think it's tftbonus at gmail.com. Uh, you uh, send us over a, uh, a copy of the, of the, uh, receipt that you get back from Amazon and I will send we'll send you back a recording of a, a little workshop that I did with Tim on the triad of violence it's uh, from a little while ago and it covers this a lot more in depth it's a full I think one hour or it might even I think it's probably over an hour long but it's a real deep dive on all I'm going to give you some other perspectives on violence as a tool as well so go ahead and make sure that you email us over your receipt for that we'll go ahead and spit that back to you for free it won't cost you anything and we'll throw that in so uh, everybody, oh, thanks, Tim. I really appreciate you taking some time with us today. And everybody out there, again, going really over to, the support. yeah, man, um, going over to uh, whenviolenceistheanswer.com, check it out. And until our next Modern Combat and Survival podcast, this is Jeff Anderson saying prepare, train, and survive.